Okay, we are back. George Carlin's here tonight. George Carlin has had a, a, a tremendous influence on a, a lot of the newer comedians because he is unique in his style. And he appears in the recent movie, Prince of Tides. And he just has his eighth HBO concert airs this month, and he's just nominated for an Emmy for his children's show on PBS called Shining Time Station. He's going to be performing in New Orleans this Saturday night. Woods, welcome, Mr. George Carlin. Yeah. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good to see everybody. This is my, uh, well, my last uh, Tonight Show with Johnny Carson, and this is my 105th Tonight Show. By no means. <laughs> Certainly not a record. A lot of people are up around 200, I understand, but 105 of them. And I always did a stand-up, didn't I, Johnny? Always did a stand-up. None of that, let's sit right down and, you know, talk about my goat operation or something. <laughs> Uh, six minutes per monologue, a total of ten and a half hours standing here or in New York in the same spot. And uh, that's a lot of, that's a lot of uh, time. Uh, I could have had sex three or four times during that. <laughs> but it is good to be here. And this is the first time doing the show without any pressure at all of hoping they'll invite me back. <laughs> I, uh, Commissary, can't say enough about the commissary. Went there again tonight, Johnny, the penguin, cacciatore. <laughs> Sauteed bat groins I had. Very good, very good. And the diced loon. <laughs> also, you might be interested, Johnny, a wonderful new restaurant in the valley, Top of the Schmuck. Have you been there yet? <laughs> yes, well, it's a big 15-story statue of a schmuck and the restaurant is in the hat band. <laughs> you might want to drop in. Really a good place. You have to forgive me, I'm a little nervous tonight. I only started recently shaving my legs. And boy, that takes a lot of foam, doesn't it? And the aftershave, whoa. But I, I also, I'm not, not feeling completely well. I was traveling in Pennsylvania recently and I was uh, beaten up. Or, oh, you, you're from Pennsylvania. I was beaten up by a buggy full of Amish people. Uh, I'm not expecting it. Anyway. Working on a nice new investment of mine, a uh, roach spray. It doesn't kill the roaches, but it fills them with self-doubt as to whether or not they're in the right house. <laughs> you know you have a drinking problem when you get in a fist fight over the outcome of Jeopardy. <laughs> I would like to announce tonight I am no longer saying have a nice day. I got finished with that years ago, but I don't believe you should put the responsibility on a person of having a complete nice day. I'm giving specific short-term well wishes now. I say things like, have a satisfying mid-morning or a rewarding post-lunch. You know what I say at five o'clock? Have an interesting dusk. Figured out the security thing at our house. For years, we had security problems, put up a sign, pit bull on angel dust. And uh, nobody has come by except uh, two guys on angel dust, actually. <laughs> and, and as long as we're talking about signs, you know that sign, severe tire damage, do not back up? Well, when you're going through there, forward, don't you worry a little anyway? <laughs> Maybe they didn't get it right. Maybe a guy on drugs installed the spikes. Or maybe you're on drugs. And you're hoping you're going forward. Am I backing up? Well, let me take a look at the spikes. Oh, can't see them. Better back up a little. <laughs> Have you ever noticed that the Ku Klux Klan has never really produced any great composers? <laughs> Just an observation. You know, you know what kind of surgery you never hear about? Nose enhancement. <laughs> See, many of these are not intended to be funny. Many of these, in honor of my last Tonight Show with Johnny Carson, are just observations. <laughs> I'm hoping that they lower the drinking age. I just want to see a sign in a bar that says, 
you must be 11 and prove it. <laughs> some people think of the glass as half full. Some people think of the glass as half empty. I think of the glass as too big. If you fall asleep in a house where there is an adult woman present, when you wake up, you will have a blanket on you. <laughs> you know those toilet seat covers that they have on the wall in the bathroom, public bathrooms? They come in packages of 250. Someone had to decide that. Another one of those interesting observations. Uh, you know you're in the wrong store when one of your personal checks is framed on the wall behind the clerk. <laughs> Do you think it's more immoral to kill a 300-pound person or two 150-pound persons? <laughs> Why must hailstones always be the size of something else? Names are very important. I think the Second World War would have been a lot easier if his name had been Slim Hitler. <laughs> Three observations in one monologue. <laughs> you know what you never see, and I'll, I'll close with this, you never see a really romantic French ballad singer with a 12-pound cyst on his neck. <laughs> I think Sparky or Biff Hitler would have done it. Sparky Hitler, yeah, See, yeah. I that, think you're right. You just needed that. Names are so important. Sparky or, or have, Biff. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be right back. Stay where you are. We'll be back. <laughs> Sparky, Sparky. We're back with George Carlin. <laughs> Indeed we are, friend. Congratulations on that. That's nice, sir. Uh, that's nice right. to get the Emmy for PBS on the, on the kids' side. Uh, it's a nomination, and I, I hope, uh, yeah, hope it happens. I'm up against Mr. Rogers, though. Oh. <laughs> so we'll Can see. you say, oh, I hope so? <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll anyway. be practicing. Yeah. When was the first time you, you did this show before? I took it over, didn't you? Yes. You uh, go back to uh, the par days. My first time on was with my partner, Jack Burns. Jack later right. got more fame uh, with his other partner, Avery Schreiber. You're right. Burns and Schreiber. But uh, got more fame. That's a strange phrase. Yeah. But I didn't want to say notoriety because I don't like that word. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know what? Dreams come true. Dreams come true. Jack and I were still in radio in Fort Worth. Right. And we wanted to be nightclub comedians. And, and he was the nighttime newsman, and I was the disc jockey from 7 to midnight. And afterwards, we would go home, we would turn on the TV, watch the Jack Parr show, and then we would fantasize and doing mock interviews as what we would say if we were on there. And this happened every night. And, we, and some of them got very funny. And I was just sitting there in our underwear, you know, watching TV, watching the Par Show. And seven months later, we were on it, which is amazing. You know, yeah. I mean, we, we still stayed in radio three months past that. So four months after being in the business sometimes, in 1960. Sometimes it works. Yeah, 1960, Jack and I were on. Arlene Francis was the substitute host that night. We didn't get on with Par himself. Then I did it once in between Par and you when they That's were right, testing the and trying people. Right. Mort Saul was kind enough to bring me on. And my first time with you was 1967, and I've done, like it's I say, 105. A long, long time. Yeah, yeah. Now, something was in my mind when you were saying that, and, and, and it just left me. Has that ever happened to you? Oh, yeah. Oh, is that where you got the idea of working in the radio station, or the first bit you did about the wild Willie West, Jackie? yeah, the wonderful wino. Wonderful that, wino. That's right. Yeah, that oh. yeah I used to... Uh, oh. That's what I thought radio did. Yeah, that was the, that first sort of incarnation of mine during the 60 through, through 70, right. when I did a lot of media stuff, Al Sleet, the Hippy Dippy Weatherman, yeah. and all those... But you progress. You've always changed and focused in on what's happening and kept ahead of the game. Well, I've, I've always just kind of listened to, to myself yeah. and seen what's next, you know, and, and if I feel something I, 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 and I really feel strongly, I do it. Yeah. You got into new investments at all or anything going with that you? Uh, daytime fireworks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not a big payoff. Didn't, didn't work out, huh? No. 
My, my biggest concern is, is, is uh, the family right now. You know, I've uh -huh. talked to you about my son, D'Artagnan. D'Artagnan, yes. Yeah. Uh, unusual name for a boy. Yeah, well, he's only one of them. There was, of course, Silas, Cheech, Akbar, T-Bone, Winslow, <laughs> Satan, Night Train, Gargantua, Tonto, and Spud. <laughs> And Dagwood, I didn't mention Dagwood. Dagwood, right? Dagwood. Dagwood's having trouble. Dagwood's been arrested again. He's in oh. trouble. Yeah. Girl, giving a virgin a hot foot. <laughs> Which I never heard. I never of, heard of that. Of that. And uh, doing the it's wave. It's a little known crime, isn't it? Pardon me? A little known crime. It is. It's a misdemeanor. Thank, thank <laughs> goodness. <laughs> doing the wave in church is. Uh, Man. Yeah. But he's been in trouble before, you uh -huh. know, uh, staging illegal cow fights. Illegal cow fights? And uh, selling improperly labeled yo yo's to a minor. <laughs> Uh, but he's had a, he had it tough when he Troublesome was Troublesome kid. kid, yeah. Yeah, we were in a tough neighborhood. You have, you've heard of Hell's Kitchen? Yes. Well, this was in the suburbs of Hell's Breakfast Nook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he, he, had, he had a little dog and didn't want to call it Spot. You know what he called it? No. Stain. Stain. <laughs> I've got to cut away. Okay. Have, I'm kidding. <laughs> Not that I want you to no, stop, but strange. we'll be right back. <laughs>